Hello everyone, my name is Dennis, and you are on the Den Electro channel. Today we will make a power bank for a real radio amateur. As you may have guessed, the case is made of a multimeter. On the side to control it, there is one button made of a transistor. There are two USB connectors for charging devices. The first is designed for one ampere and the second for two. To turn on the power bank, you need to hold down the side button. If you quickly click on it twice, the flashlight located on the other side turns on. When I turn the knob, a powerful flashlight turns on. Well, now I'll tell you how to make such a power bank. To create it, you will need a burnt out multimeter. A board for homemade power banks, which I reviewed in the previous video. And a battery. I will use a lithium polymer battery with a capacity of 10,000 milliamp hours. This is enough to charge my phone three times. The battery, although not new, still works great. First, I open the tester and take out all the insides. The back cover is full of all sorts of pillars and irregularities. They must be dismantled to level the surface. Then I glue the cardboard with double-sided tape. This is all done to smooth the surface. I put the battery there and press it well. Now even if the power bank hangs around a lot, the battery will not move anywhere. There are two columns on the front wall near the window for the display. It is very convenient to insert a board between them. But the board turned out to be a little wider, so some things need to be changed in it. There is a rectangular notch on the board. I bite off the corners and make a larger cutout. Now the board will be inserted into the case between two posts and held there like it was originally and from below it will be supported by a shelf. Now you need to put the display under the board. Keeping the raft level, you need to figure out where to make the slots for connectors, light bulbs, and buttons. If necessary, do the same in the back wall. After a lot of file work, it turned out that I had gone a little overboard. There is a large slot near the USB connector. To make a flashlight, you need to take a switching wheel, a 1N4007 diode, and 10 5mm of white LEDs. I make holes in the wheel with a heated paper clip. Of course, the melted plastic around the edges of the hole must be removed. Otherwise, the LEDs will stand up unevenly. When the LEDs are installed, you get such a cute little thing. On the reverse side, all LEDs are soldered in parallel. Wires are removed from them. When soldering, everything needs to be made as thin as possible so that they do not later cling to the board. You need to remove everything unnecessary from the board so that it is even and nothing sticks out. Now let's look at the board from the back side. There are many contacts on it. We need to find contacts that would close when the circle is turned. I'll take these two contacts. They will be closed by plates installed on the wheel. The transition from one side of the board to the other occurs through small holes. After this, you need to solder the wires to the necessary contacts here. Then you need to break off a piece of the wall in the front cover, as shown in the video. And insert the wheel. We lay the wires in the place where the wall is broken off. The wires need to be thin and soft. When the regulator rotates, they should not create resistance. Then I put the board back and tighten the screws.
Now you can spin the wheel. But not 360 degrees, but only to the place where the contacts will close to turn on the LEDs. Please note that I filed the board so that you can easily lay down the display later. Just in case, the wires soldered to the board need to be ringed. There must be infinite resistance between them. Otherwise, the LEDs will draw current even if they are turned off. It turned out that my resistance was about 900 ohms. The current passes through the radio elements remaining on the board. To make it more clear, let's take a look at the diagram. The on-off button is a contact on the multimeter board that closes when the circle rotates. When the switch is open, no current should flow through the LEDs. But some parts with a resistance of 900 ohms were soldered parallel to the button. In this case, the LEDs will not light up, but a small current will pass through them and the batteries will eventually discharge albeit for a very long time. Then I unsoldered all the excess and measured the resistance again. All is pure resistance, infinite. I sealed the extra slit with tape. Later you will see why this is needed. Then on the multimeter display you need to make a window for the power bank display. First you need to remove the white reflective foil and then the polarizing layer. Otherwise, the image will be dark. Now I'm setting up the display. I put a conductive rubber band on it so that it supports the board from below. And I put the board on top. Then I connected all the wires. The white wire will be soldered to the battery positive, minus for black. Plus, through a diode, it will go to the LEDs installed on the regulator. Then he will come out of them and go to the board. And there it will pass through the opening contacts on the board. It will come out from there and come to minus. To make a button, you need to take either a transistor or a microcircuit in a similar package. And bend the legs as shown in mine. You need to spread a drop of hot glue on its surface. The transistor will be inserted into the housing in this way. The bottom will be held on by its flange, and the top cover will be held on by the legs. To make the board hold more securely, I applied sealant. I glued several layers of tape to this board to prevent sharp parts from piercing the battery. I also soldered the positive and negative wires to the battery terminals, Since both halves of the body now have no reinforcements, I had to glue them together with super glue. By the way, I also sealed the extra window under its USB connectors with sealant. Then after assembly I noticed one problem. The display should show three numbers. First unit. It was hidden by the multimeter display. This happened because when I applied the power bank board, it was not fully charged all the time. And only two numbers were displayed. After the work done, you get a super mega original power bank, which you won't see anywhere else. That's all for today. Put like, write a comment, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're here for the first time and bye everyone.